he doesn't have a name. He's just a Brian Andrews story, people. A storage closet full of memories that aren't mine. Today, his chiseled face is ashen like the statue I first took him for from across an Albuquerque street corner. That I should make some show of sympathy occurs to me, but I just stare into a face that is a vacant mirror of my own and reimagine the journey that should have led him home. He could have toppled sideways like the countless dead beside him, but beyond the confines of his vision, they passed through country mile after mile, and he stood in a roofless railroad car as he said goodbye on his violin to an audience of dying men, sentiment lifted on the wings of sin to a god that he had never met. And between climbing out and crawling in, he savored one more glimpse of something that appeared remarkably like freedom to a man with hands as strong as toothpicks and the shards of his own shattered soul beneath his feet. And his calluses were thicker than scripture, and he knew to forget some words were ever spoken, leave the fiddle as a token, and go to know the desperate flame, the searing lick he couldn't tame, and he danced as fire fell like rain in the broken spaces between each charred farewell and every hello that never passed the trembling lips of a world where every salutation was a stiff salute, every handshake instead an echoing hail, and each of your liberties have come to belong to someone else. I shudder, this imagination is my gift, is a curse, for still it haunts me. Like the melody of a Viennese requiem, it is the swan song of Orpheus. And I wish I were listening to the lecture relating K-A to P-H, but I can't look away from the patient desperation of an unshed plea for salvation in the glance of an innocent captive, knowing I could do nothing for him even if I wanted to.